Sodom and Gomorrah, the fire that rained down from heaven, burned the wicked people in that city to ashes, and they served Jude rites as an example by undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. But what does this have to do with the doctrine of annihilation? The example of Sodom as a people destroyed by fire could only serve to establish a doctrine of annihilation if consciousness is the product of physical processes in the body. If the body dies and consciousness depends on the animation of the body, then the people of Sodom could serve as an example of the annihilation of the ungodly at the final judgment. More commonly, the church has affirmed that consciousness can in fact persist beyond the death of the physical body. This would undermine the claim that the inhabitants of Sodom, inasmuch as they died from God's judgment, serve as an example of annihilation. Notice moreover that Jude says that they are undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. The word undergoing is a present tense participle, which typically tells us that its action occurs at the same time as the main verb serve. Sodom are undergoing eternal fire at the same time as they serve as an example, which is at the time of Jude's writing. This could then suggest that the example of Sodom extends beyond the fireball blast that killed the inhabitants and points to an ongoing state of affairs that will be cemented at the resurrection of the unjust. Indeed, this fits with the logical flow of thought in the text. The reference to the disobedient angels in verse 6 focuses first on their past misdeed and then their present affliction, incarceration in eternal chains. In a similar way, Jude says, Sodom who likewise indulged immorality, that's their past misdeed, now serve as a present example by undergoing the punishment of eternal fire.